A journey to find supplies leads to some profound personal revelations and an episode that proves this show is best when it focuses on excellent character development. It's Fear the Walking Dead, Season 4, Episode 6, Just In Case. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of Fear the Walking Dead. So yes, of course, spoilers are ahead. All right, nice episode this week. And as I said, I think its strength lied in some excellent character development, some great focusing just on what people are doing, who they are, where they're coming from, and how they're dealing with this apocalyptic world, and how the effects of this world has on them. Wonderful opening sequence just to kick things off. I love getting our little insight into the vulture. I mean, we had seen sort of the effects and how thorough they are when they do their runs. Uh, and here was, was perfect. Yes, they're getting the food. They're getting the light bulbs. They're pulling the wiring. They're taking the door hardware. Uh, anything and everything that could possibly be used, they are scraping and taking. So yeah, not a whole lot left to find after the vultures go through. Um, though this particular one not really leaving with his take running into John and Morgan. And oh man, John is just, ah, I love him. I love him as a character. And this was so perfect, so quiet, just off the screen talking about, look man, I don't want to kill you, but I can. And the guy's hands up and he's like, yeah, I know you're looking down at your gun. You think you can pull that? But you can't. I'm fast quicker than you, even on my worst day. Here, I'm going to put my gun away. Don't, I mean, it was just, the whole bit was just this excellent bit of character work from John, who's really showing a lot of self-restraint, um, especially considering <laughs> how he almost loses it immediately afterwards trying to get information on Laura, Naomi, uh, as, as we learn. Um, and also, just beautiful bit blowing that guy's finger off. I mean, he said he was going to try to aim for the hand, uh, and he did. Uh, really, it was just sort of a great bit, great way of sort of setting everything up. And, of course, Morgan's turn back towards uh, a bit of a peacenik here, uh, towards the mercy, no killing rule coming into apply. And that's sort of an important bit. As I said, we have a lot of parallels of character work uh, going on in this episode. Uh, the primary one, of course, would be between Strand and Naomi. Uh, both very self-serving individuals looking out for number one. Uh, Strand, I think, really reacting strongly to Naomi because I think, I, I think all of Strand's anger in this episode is really a reflection of his anger with himself. I mean, he isn't use, even uses the same line to Naomi, do you want us to thank you for showing us who you really are? Which is exactly what Cole had said to him earlier in the episode. Thank you for showing me who you are before I got, you know, really got to know you, before I tied myself in. You know, Strand's self-servingness not working well with Cole there. And so I think that sort of reflection is kind of the fallout that Naomi is getting throughout of this. I think that's the reason for a lot of Strand's anger. And yes, Naomi is very, very, very self-survival oriented, though she's being honest in a way. I mean, she did sort of share the information, not readily, it kind of got out of her. Uh, but you can see, it's that, that trying to do something different, trying to make a change. And that's really what uh, uh, Maddie uh, her representation in this episode is, you know, Maddie is very drastic different uh, character than we have had before. In the first few seasons of the show, she was pretty much willing to do anything and everything, kill, murder, maim, betray, whatever, in order to protect her kids. This manifestation of Maddie is almost the exact opposite, who is all about new beginnings, finding new and different ways. Not necessarily afraid uh, to fight if she, if she has to, but that is not her primary choice. She's trying to find the better side. We had that whole discussion between Strand, learning a bit more of their history. Why did you save me after we did all of this? You know, 
This is Maddie. She is trying to find a new way. And he's a good drinking buddy. But with Maddie, I think the parallel we have with her is with Morgan. Because Maddie is, again, trying to find not just the violent way, that there is a new way, that there is that, that we can all start over. And that's sort of what Morgan is representing throughout this episode. He hits it off with John when he kind of, and John even listens to him when he says, hey, stop it, you don't have to kill him, you can do something different. And, and John appreciates him, and even giving Morgan his guns, which I thought was kind of surprising. But that plays on later on when we get towards the end of the episode, where we have Morgan interacting with uh, uh, the, the modern day company of, of Strand Luciana and Alicia saying, you don't have to attack these vultures. There is a different way, um, which is probably a good idea. Um, kind of a hitting that strong note. It's like, I wish I had told Nick and I'm telling you right now. That certainly hit Alicia rather strongly. Um, but that idea of what you're doing is only going to make things worse really kind of plays out in that end sequence when the vultures show up uh, at, against what seems to be a fairly outnumbered small group of our, our, our heroes. Yes, they're heavily armed, they have grenades, but they didn't do a really good ambush setup. They didn't seem really prepared. I was thinking that maybe it was, it was John and Morgan that had sort of drawn them out of their hiding place, um, and that sort of ruined their ambush, but they were still getting ready even when uh, when Morgan and John showed up. They didn't seem to take any positions. They hadn't mined anything. They didn't set up tripwires or anything. Just, they know the numbers they're going up against. I didn't think they had planned that out really well. Uh, but, this is pointing out, you know, more. that's Morgan's representation, I think. So I think what we have here is, you know, Strand is learning off of Naomi. They're building off of each other after Naomi kind of turns around. Strand sort of emits it out to Cole, maybe start to create a little relationship positivity there. Uh, and the same thing we have with Maddie. We don't have Maddie in the current world, uh, in the modern time, as far as we know at the moment. But Morgan is there to show them you can't just have this violent reaction. There is another way. There is a better way. So, of course, most of this episode really is kind of Naomi-focused. We had sort of, you know, her time with John last week and learning that part of the story where she had remarked that she had lost her kid. And because of her response, wasn't entirely sure if the kid had died, which was the most likely one, or was actually lost and out there, and that's what she is out running around trying to find. Here, we learn the truth of this a little bit darker. Um, that story of, uh, the kid getting pneumonia and she goes out to try and get medicine, caught for several days, hides the kid in the pantry, locks the door. Of course, the kid dies, turns, and I'm assuming either makes noise and people go to check out, oh, what's wrong with the kid? Or the kid just wanders out while everybody is sleeping, starts the attack, turns everyone. Just, just just, a heartbreaking story all around. And while that was intense, uh, the bigger, the better scene was the one that actually set that story up. And that is what we are calling our Scene of the Week for this week. And that is, of course, Naomi's lone uh, uh, raiding into the FEMA Center. Uh, that whole sequence, I thought, was beautifully done and without and told the whole story you knew the whole story before she had to say anything it was all done silently and it was just it was a great setup i had complained last week about some of the walker interactions seeming a little bit contrived this was exactly the opposite this felt really natural this was a this the, this seemed like a logical danger situation to get in. She gets to the FEMA center, it's all locked up. She does the little knock to make the, the attract the walkers in who come up to the doors. Perfect, smart move. Goes around to the back, then goes through and starts her exploration. And she's seeing things. She's seeing the, the, the cribs and the kids' toy. You could see that emotional effect. And obviously she's thinking about her kid. And as she's came here, it's like, well, is this her kid stuff, or is it just reminding her? And then she runs into, uh, you know, she's, she, she's wandering through, she's finding a little bit, she gets to uh, the case uh, that she opens up. She knows the combination, too, so obviously this is a strong personal connection. And there you've got all the notes, 
surgery notes, how to do medical dressing, how to raise crops, how to plant things, how to repair stuff. Very much like the manual that we had in uh, The Walking Dead, A Key to a Better Tomorrow, A Key to the Future. I think, sorry. This, a very similar idea here. So I thought that was really, again, very insightful. And I'm wondering, is this hers? Is this someone else's? Does she have access? Is this where she learned? Was she actually a medical nurse? I mean, or, you know, an ER nurse? She seemed to be, can't just learn everything from a little notebook here. Uh, with the keys, J-I-C, uh, which also reminds me of just, was it uh, J-S-S? Just, just, uh, just stay, stay alive, JSA. Just survive somehow. That's it. I knew it would come to me. JSS. Just survive somehow. It was uh, Enid's family's advice to her. But that thing is, is just, just keep going here just in case, as we find out later on. So whenever there's initials, you sort of pay attention to that. So again, we're, we're getting all this great character introduction, and then when she goes in and she sees the drawings, which you realize from that reaction, that had to be her kids' drawings. And just the shock and the collapse and that noise, again, a natural physical response, that pulls the walkers in. That she tries to get away from. And again, they're slow. She's able to move around a certain the area. Again, all of this very natural, very logical. And as she runs into more of the walkers, her reaction, you can tell she knows these people. This isn't just a walker. She is seeing someone she knew now turned coming back. And as it just gets all the way up to the end and she is surrounded and climbs up that little scaffolding and it's just the, I'm so sorry. It's just, that was it. I mean, that was perfect. That whole sequence told us everything we needed to know in a very logical, scary moment, a very uh, effective moment personal danger uh, and opening up what was obviously a very strong personal wound, which pretty much leads to the point of just accepting her own death. Uh, just a whole marvelously done sequence. But of course we have uh, Strand and uh, Maddie come in. Strand putting himself in danger to do the rescue. He's making that better move. So we had some good character bit. Kind of the obvious, you know, we're going to get her away, but the rope's going to slip. and We're going to be dangling over the walkers. It's going to be scary. That was a little much. Uh, I love the more natural setup that we had of the previous sequence. But this was important. This was great. We had everybody coming together. We have our relevatory story. Uh, we get all of our supplies. We get the G JIC just in case bit. And I have to say, I love, I love the fact that this lady Ellen was teaching people classes on how to survive out there. Fortunately, he taught them to survive out there and not in the FEMA center where zombie kids are gonna eat you. Uh, but again, it was a cool sequence. But through that, I think that does give Maddie that sort of additional idea of, well, if we're thinking of just in case, Maybe we should be able to have a backup vehicle of our own, kind of like Strand was. Little supplies, some guns, some gas, basic stuff. Um, as, the, as the vultures go off with that last little warning of you never know the really bad stuff you never see coming. Uh, I just, <laughs> and speaking of the vultures, I'm sorry. Again, I'm just, I'm not scared of them. They do not seem like a bad guy. I mean, it's, it's kind of an interesting bit as we have uh, Alicia and Nick and Luciana going up to talk with the, the vultures out there and let them know, hey, we got supplies, we got food, we got all the stuff that we need. You've picked out everything in the 50 mile area. Maybe you are hungry. And then the vultures just left. Again, surprising. I, I, the suspicion there on Maddie's part afterwards obviously makes sense. Why would these people just leave after they've been camping out for so long that they just think that, oh, now they, we're not going to be able to outlast them. They're going to be well supplied. Guess we'll have to go. Um, you know, again, I get Maddie's suspicion there. It also shows that she hasn't lost all of her old character bit. Uh, but it just, it just seemed like, I don't know. Again, I just, I don't fear the vultures. Now, when they did show up later on, when we get our flash forward bit to the now, uh, and they do pull up to the ambush point, and they are prepared, and they're coming out with guns. I was like, well, at least they're ready. 
Um, man, Alicia with the dig. He's apologizing about Nick's death, and she's not apologizing for his brother's death, who I'm assuming was the one that Nick killed. Um, that's just a guess. Though, how he knew about Nick dying and not his own brother, because that seemed to have a stronger reaction to him, like he hadn't known that yet. Um, maybe it was just Charlie who shot Nick and then ran back to him, and then they told the rest of the vultures there about shooting Nick, and that's probably, that, that makes sense of how, how, how that probably went down. Um, but of course, we have the big surprise. There is Naomi showing up. Laura for John, which was a bit of a shock and does open the ideas that if Naomi's alive, perhaps Maddie is also, uh, which might cut under this, this, this strangely obsessive quest our little team has because they are not in a good position at that point. There's three of them and a bunch more of those guys. And even though they are grenades and automatic weapons and she's got a little grenade launcher and stuff on that, I just, they're not, odds wise, things don't look very good to them. Um, especially if you're going to start shooting out of anger. And that was the one part that really upset me. Now, I don't think that she has killed John. Because Nick just died a couple episodes ago. Uh, and John's one of our new most awesome characters. So I'm praying, you know, Laura Naomi is uh, a, an ER nurse. So she can do some repairs. Uh, she can't do some 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 uh, uh, medical work right there. So I don't think he's going to die, but I was still really upset with her shooting uh, 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 shooting John right there. It's just just overly emotional. And again, these are the wrong decisions that Morgan's trying to warn him against because now the vultures are going to open fire. And they're kind of in a crossfire, but they're not they're not in a good position. Things aren't going to go well from here. And yes, I know Alicia was shooting at Naomi, I think out of anger, and John jumps in to protect her because, of course, that's what he's going to do. So, no, I mean, Alicia didn't intentionally shoot John, but still, she fired with a bunch of people upset with guns around her. Not going to end well. All right, just a couple of small things. Uh, one, Naomi is really sneaky and very quiet. Uh, I know she got caught trying to leave the diamond at the beginning there, uh, but sneaking past Maddie and Strand after they know that she might be running out, she still gets away. Um, I don't know. She's resourceful. I also love the fact that she just went and hot-wired a different car, but still left on the Range Rover. Um, though, on the other hand, there's a lot of cars out there with gas for a couple years in the apocalypse. Just saying. Uh, the giant uh, trunk Naomi came across that she got the keys out of. Uh, I was kind of hoping that she'd maybe take a few more things out of that. There seemed to be a lot of information. There was the book with all the, the growing and, and repair. Uh, there was the keys, but there were guns. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Just kind of wish she'd maybe taken a little bit more. You know, just in case. Really enjoying Althea. Doesn't do a whole lot this episode, but just showed that she's not taking any shit from anyone, uh, which I thought was great. Certainly not that her guns are for sale. Uh, but really, the fact that she's reinforcing that she is just the person behind the camera, that she's just here to document, uh, I thought was great because even as we had all of our tension bit moments when Morgan and John show up and they're on their knees, and then even when the vultures show up and then Naomi does, Althea's just in the background recording anything. Really, being just the journalist. I'm not involved. I'm just documenting what's going on. Um, it's a, they're committing to that character choice, and I really enjoy that. Oh, and I think what's implied there with uh, Leisha's response uh, to Naomi showing up is uh, the Range Rover is what she put all of those supplies in that her mom asked her to. A little bit of rationing, the gun, some medical supply, uh, just in case. So perhaps her angered response was that Naomi didn't die, but she went out and took the, emerge took the backup vehicle, and that may have left her mom or other people in the diamond to actually die. So that might explain a little bit of her anger. Also that she's with the vultures, that doesn't help.
All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up everything for this week. Uh, again, just a really good character movement, some, some good story coming forward. We're obviously going to find out more next week of what this bad thing the Vulture for Warning Maddie about uh, is going to end up being. Hopefully by the end of this uh, spring season, half season, we will get through the whole diamond stuff and see how that all eventually fell apart and went down. Uh, but we're also going to have to see how... Naomi Strand and Luciana is about to survive this uh, uh, hail of bullets that's about to be unleashed from them from the vultures. So, yeah, and obviously, got to get John saved there. Do not die, John, please. But got to wait till next week for that. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, you know, you can go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, and comments, you know where to put them, down in the section below. What do you guys think about this episode? What was your favorite part? Do you like the little focus character work? Did all this work for you? Or are you getting kind of annoyed with Morgan's peacenik bit? I don't. Again, I think it's an important character direction for him. But let me know what you guys think. Throw those down in the section below. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at... Darren Jakes. Subscribe, please. It's quick and easy. You hit this one button if you're not a subscriber, and then you'll catch all the rest of these reviews. Plus, we're doing Westworld, Preachers coming up this summer. Lots of fun stuff. Legion's amazing. We'll throw up a couple of these reviews, actually. You can check out right there. So, that's going to be it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.